Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, someone else actually talked about something that speak that actually sparked my interest. Whip my interest straight to them. They did a few days ago, as I'm actually talking about this with you guys, which is spectacular Spider-Man season three ideas, villain setups, and everything else. So I'm just gonna rip off what he's talking about, and let's just let me just say how shocked I am and how I'm not surprised in some of them. Number ten. Norman Osborn would have actually returned. Really? I would have figured what you would have done, Mr. Wiseman, was allow him to just be away, you know? And I think that's what he's actually planning to do. I was figuring he would just wait until season four to bring him back and be like, yes, he's all well rested. He has a full plan for you, Peter. And oh, it's going to be horrible. <laughs> But I would figure that he would still be present and he would actually lead to what number nine would be. But apparently, no, he's going to actually, sh we don't know for sure. We know that he's going to be in the series. So basically, my thought of he's going to be far away, he's still going to have his hands in the works here. And there we go. That would be something interesting, how it will play out. So that's number 10. Number 9 was Scorpion would show up, which we already knew that would happen. And it is just crazy that I would believe it's the same route as before. Because it's most likely it would still be business as usual, right? I mean, does everyone know that Norman Osborn is Green Goblin? I doubt they do. There was no news helicopter, there was no nothing. All they knew is that things happened. Hob got, I mean, Green Goblin got destroyed. I guess they would ask, where is Norman Osborn? So I guess he might have been revealed. And of course, he did say that the government, everything is gone from him. But I'm pretty sure that even though it's gone from him, he still has enough money to still run his underground experiments. Thus, just like he created Rhino, he is able to create the Scorpion as well. The only messed up part is he doesn't have the brains of Otto Octavius anymore. So that's one thing that's like, oh. But who knows, maybe he has one thing that he didn't actually pull out just yet, and he was holding it for a rainy day or something. Not sure. But yeah, Scorpion is going to be there. I uh, forgot what other stuff they talked about. Oh, what about the fact that the gene cleanser did not work? Let me check to make sure. Yeah, the gene cleanser. Number eight is the gene cleanser did not work on Eddie Brock after all. And I'm like, then why did the symbiote just run away from you? Did If the gene cleanser didn't work on Eddie Brock, then did it have an adverse effect on the symbiote? Or the symbiote was just going freaking crazy and nuts and he had no choice but to escape? I don't know. That's a little bit of a question. But yeah, Venom would return and he would have a, even more of a event in the series for season three roger killing roderick kingsley will be cobb goblin or someone would be like robert it's like i don't know roger king kingsley i don't know for sure it might be him it might be ned leeds which they do have ned leeds and they said that he was brainwashed and stuff like that so for all we know roger kingsley is not a fighter since Roderick Kingsley is not a fighter, what if it's either A. Norman Osborn teamed up with Roderick Kingsley and they brainwashed a new person, Ned Leeds, to become Hot Goblin? Or it could be the fact of where it's like, who's the new Goblin? Oh, good lord, is Norman Osborn alive? Is he back? Just crazy stuff like that to the point where it's like, yeah, and they have a bunch of people playing as Hobgoblin, but Roderick Kingsley is Hobgoblin. Not sure. And then the next one after that is Miles Warren will have more setup, which is like, yeah, of course. Ever since Miles Warren's shown up, lots of people have been drawing how Ben Riley would come into the freaking show. So technically, you already have people's interest peaked. So he would have more things to do, and of course, would figure eventually he'll have a sample of, of course, you know, Spider Man. I also have to believe that you definitely would set up Carnage here too, because Carnage is in the same place that Eddie Brock is. 
So it's either that, and I guess the even crazier part is be, what if the gene cleanser, which separates stuff, was actually made the symbiote actually be like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm about to reproduce. And that's why it escaped, because it was going to reproduce, and when it went to Eddie, it actually reproduced. So it felt vulnerable because something was going on inside of it, and it looks like the gene cleanser was more like a, I won't say an aphrodisiac, but it was something that actually stimulated the symbiote to the point of, it will reproduce. So we don't know if they would actually allow Carnage to be here, but that would be a lot, that would be better if that's the real case of why it actually fleed instead of the gene cleanser worked. Come on, gene cleanser worked. There's no other reason why the symbiote would run. All right, so here's the rest. Let me make sure I have all the notes that I whipped up. So apparently, L. Thompson Lincoln would return, but it's more the fact of he will return to develop the relationship that or the connection between him and Robbie Robertson. Yes, the guy from the Daily Bugle who looked out for Peter. That's all I got. So basically, he'll be behind bars, and most likely it might be something if I have to spitball or basically web things together to a wall and see if it sticks is perhaps he was assigned or he signed someone to something or the fact of he actually Lincoln had a phone call and he used it on Robbie Robertson it's either that and it's like something where he's gonna have his own article in the Daily Bugle that's what his demand is so it's either that he tried to get that to get Robbie Robertson or it's just happened in between to where it's like oh well that's interesting and of course Peter is like hmm well he doesn't know his identity so that's good it's <laughs> like so, yeah uh, apparently again we have a nice little stamp of approval that more more uh, Morbius would be in the show Morbius would be in the show a guy named Sin Eater would be in the show, but of course you have a different take of what he is. Uh, let's see. Hmm. So where Sable would have more connections to her comic book part instead of what's going on previously. And last but not least is of course, Craven the Hunter would have more encore with what's going on with the series. With that said, I think I'm okay with it. Sin Eater? I would have figured he would be something a part of Eddie Brock, which I would love it if he was trying to gun for Venom and, well, Spider-Man to get in the way. That would be a cool, like, contrast. Too bad John Jameson will not be continued on with this, which is like, yeah, I would love to see it, but it's like, oh, it needs room to breathe. You'll bring him back later. It'll be room for him to breathe. Okay. Who knows? Maybe you have uh, Morbius working on... John Jameson. It's like, who knows? Maybe that connection could be the fact of how he turned into a vampire. Not sure. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Who knows? Maybe because of Morbius, if he actually sucks the essence out of John Jameson over there, he could become normal again. Not sure. We're not sure on that one. But either way, I do feel like I want to watch season two of Spectacular Spider-Man yet again. We'll just have to see when I do it. Anyways, I'm wiping out. What do you guys think about this? Peace.